Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tipsy Ghost. We are your tipsy hosts, Sarah, Sarah, and Lindsay. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's been a while since we've all sat together. It has been a while. That was very sing-songy and I liked it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you actually liked one of my songs? I did. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's are like you, a first. Are you setting us up for a musical edition of the podcast today? <laughs> Maybe we should spend a little bit more time apart so that you miss my singing. <laughs> I've always loved your singing, okay? <laughs> I just have unique comments about your singing. <laughs> Poison, does she love my singing? We all do. <laughs> Stop it. You're all full of it. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> Can you forget what I said? And Can just... you sing a song? No. Sing for us. We missed it. Yeah. No, I have no songs in my heart right now. Hamilton, bring it up. <laughs> it, it, Boydson will get so mad at me. Uh, wait, I know but you just you, went to a musical. If you just solo it, <laughs> don't add the good part in. Just solo uh, it. The good part? <laughs> As she points at Sarah. <laughs> no. No, I'm definitely not. <laughs> I ruined our shot. I was very... Shut up. I see what you did She's there. <laughs> You're setting me up. I was almost going to do it until you said the good part. <laughs> now I'm going to just... I would say I was, I'm never going to sing again, but we know that's not going to happen. We know that's not going to happen. <laughs> I give it 30 minutes. <laughs> I'll probably sing this episode. Let's be real. Oh, thank God. I've missed it so much. <laughs> you didn't even do it on our little trip to Herman. I didn't see. I don't think so. Mm. There was a part I got pretty tipsy at. I wasn't singing during that part right before lunch. Oh, I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't remember either. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> what else is new with you fools? Anything? I am burnt. You are. You do look a little uh, red. Were you sitting outside today? <laughs> yes. No, she got that inside. <laughs> you have a tanning bed? <laughs> it's a light bulb burn. Only my, my left arm was in the tanning okay, bed. Okay, listen. Yes. <laughs> when I came over, you had the umbrella up, so I didn't know. I know. That's because okay. I was already burnt. <laughs> no, I... I asked the exact same thing, so... <laughs> <laughs> I had to partake in the D today. Uh, what? The vitamin D. Oh, okay. <laughs> down a different yeah, path not okay a dirty, not a dirty bird but she I set am. you up to think that i appreciate that <laughs> it's the new big hands big d <laughs> to partake in the d it was great <laughs> oh my god i can't you got burned though by the d you i did. mean that happens sometimes <laughs> you do too much man mm-hmm. you gotta go <laughs> all i was doing it and i was just laying there i don't know <laughs> you need protection yes Mm-hmm. Next time. Here we are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's <a> good metaphor. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Oh, so. I say. Oh, it wasn't even 30 minutes. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> you been like three. You missed it because you're just so used to it. <laughs> Seriously, just, though, if I, I sat out, out. if I sat in the sun all day like that, I would be like a blister, a giant blister. That's why I was covered in Herman, had a hat on. You were. I'm a poster child for sunscreen. Good yeah. for you. Sunscreen <laughs> is a good thing. <laughs> I mean, I have two ginger kids, so yeah. does that explain things? I, I, I need to be better about sunscreen. I'm really bad about sunscreen. <sighs> so is Boyston, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> do you just not burn normally? No, I well, I do, and then I tan, and then I burn, and then I tan. I do the Perfect. same thing, though. I'll go to Girl. the beach, and I'll burn, and then If I'll I tan. know I'm going to be outside, I'll wear it, but I was just going to be out there for just a bit. Yeah. I had some meetings I was going to do from outside, and it just, out, a little bit turned into a few hours. You're just going to do a little bit of D, but then it turned into a few hours. The whole D. Time. It was a whole day <laughs> commitment. <laughs> Got to take it all in. Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. You did a nice job. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> but now you're paying the price. Because, yeah, she's it's burned. The price. <laughs> I just, I have aloe in my fridge. <laughs> in pay your fridge? For these occasions. Yeah, you keep it. It cools your skin when it's refrigerated. It, oh, it cools my skin without refrigeration. I never thought to put it in my fridge. Try it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll have to do that. I was going to say, you got to pay for your thrills. Mm-hmm. I was going to add on to your, your big day of D. <laughs> my, no. <laughs> Okay. Never mind. No, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> Don't go. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Okay. All right. We all thought it, but 
So we talked a little bit about our trip that we took. Uh huh. Should we talk about what happened at our townhouse at that trip? Sure. Just for those who maybe didn't catch it on Instagram Live. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to say about sure. it? Sure. Okay. So we took a girls trip, not a ghost hunting trip whatsoever. It was a vaccinated girls trip. It was a vaccinated girls trip. We were like, look, we're all vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Let's go. So we went to wine country. (laughs) That makes it sound like it was a celebratory (laughs) vaccination. No. (laughs) We've been vaccinated for a while. (laughs) But restrictions were lifting. And so we're like, let's go. So we did wine country in Missouri. (laughs) Which is beautiful, by the way. It actually is really beautiful. (laughs) Doesn't even look like Missouri. No. And... We stay at this adorable little loft that we love, Mm -hmm. and we stayed there last time we were there, and this time, we all had some stuff happen to us while we were sleeping. Yeah, we did. (laughs) This time, we finally got the owner to tell us a little bit of history, Mm -hmm. and we found out that it was a dentist's office. They It was a doctor's office. They birthed babies there couple of nuns live there one until she was 102 we think she died in the house Mm -hmm. because this loft is like it's above an antique shop so she wasn't getting up and down those stairs very easily which is why we think that we don't know um but this is an old town it's an old little german town basically and so night one right it was night one yeah Mm -hmm. okay so you had the first experience of the night i did so Lindsay was in my room, we were chatting, and I told her that she needed to go tell one of our other friends who was with us this story. And so I go in there while they're talking back and forth. They're just having this heated conversation, and I'm just listening, because that's what I'm good at. It was a work story. (laughs) (laughs) It was. And so I was leaning up against, I was sitting in uh, one of the girls' beds, leaning up against the headboard with my right leg dangling off. And while they're just talking back and forth, I all of a sudden have this, like, grip on my calf. Mm. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay. Nope. I was, I was really calm about it. And so I just looked. <laughs> she up. was so calm. <laughs> I just looked down at the ground and I got up. I looked behind the headboard. I looked under the bed. And I was like, well, I don't see anything that would have done that. So um, it's, it's ghosts. It's time for you to go. Yeah. And so, well, I sat back down for maybe another minute and... Then I, I peaced out. Yeah. And she, <clears throat> like, when she said she was calm, she didn't say anything to us. Right. I just see her out of the corner where I get up, look under the bed, look behind the bed, sit down, get up and leave. <laughs> and it was, like, late at night. It was, like, 11 o'clock. And so I was, like, maybe she just got really tired. <laughs> so she just didn't say a word to us. So we kept talking in there. And, my, and I got in trouble for this later. So did. I just want to clarify that I didn't say anything <laughs> because the girl's room was not, it wasn't Lindsay or Sarah. And I didn't want to put things in people's head, make yeah, them yeah. like think that they're going to experience something. I just wanted it to be, if they happened to, it'd be totally natural. But I didn't, I honestly didn't think anything else was going to happen. Yeah. And then that night, um, I'm in the room adjoining that room. So our <laughs> rooms are connected by a door. We kept the door open. Um, but both had our doors closed to the hallway and my room is the room that they said the nuns were in and they think that the nun died in that room. And so I knew this going into it. And so I couldn't fall asleep. I was tossing and turning, finally fell asleep in the middle of the night. It was like 2 AM. And I had a dream that there was a nun. I woke up and there was a scary nun in the corner staring at me. But it was like more of like a sleep paralysis. It was like a sleep paralysis. Like I woke up and I knew I was in the room and this nun was just staring at me. And yeah. I was like frozen, trying to Dude. scream out for my friend in the adjoining room and couldn't say anything, couldn't do anything. And I just kept staring at the nun out of the corner of my eye. And she just stared at me. <laughs> but it was like she was all dark, like I couldn't even make out her face. Kind of yeah. like conjuring style nun. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Not a friendly nun. Not a friendly no. 102 year old nun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, finally came out of it and came to, and she wasn't there. So I got up to like go get a drink or something. And my dog was just hanging out in the living room there. And I was like, oh, I'm still asleep because my dog is not here. And then I woke up and I was in my bed. And then maybe your dog was trying to protect you. I was having like a dream dream. within a dream. (laughs) What's what's the name of that movie? Inception. I almost said Insidious. I knew that wasn't right. (laughs) No. So that was at like. It sounds kind of like Insidious. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, Okay. It does. So that was at like 5 a.m. is when I woke up and I got up. I went and made sure the doors were all locked because I just felt like I needed to check. I made sure the oven was off, even though we didn't use the oven. (laughs) 
I was just like kind of pacing around the house to make sure everything was okay. Then I went back into my bed and fell asleep. Yeah. And then our friend had an experience. Mm -hmm. So the one who was in the adjoining room from me, where Boydston got touched, she told me in the morning, she was like, I didn't sleep. I kept feeling like there was spiders crawling over my face the entire night. And she goes, I kept my eyes closed because I didn't want to see them, but I kept feeling spider webs all over my face the entire night. And I was like, huh. Like her face was just being touched all night. And I said, that's what people who report being touched say. It feels like spider webs. Yep. So then Boydston decided to enlighten her about what happened in her room. <laughs> yep. I was like, well, it happened, so you can know. <laughs> um, uh, she was not happy. I hand grabbed my calf from under your bed. <laughs> yeah. And so she was very mad at Boydston. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. What's new? Yeah. <laughs> and then Sarah had something that night, too. Like, all of us were in separate rooms and all had something. It's very true. And I was in bed at, like, 930. Yes. <laughs> so I didn't get to participate in the conversation or notice that Boydston's leg had been grabbed. Um, and I was on the other side, like, where the doctor's office side mm-hmm. was. And, you know, I had a little bit of trouble falling asleep, but whatever, no big deal. I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and the person who I was rooming with has one of those larger water bottles with, like, a kind of a big screw on top. And the screw on top was in the middle of the floor, but, like, in the walkway to the bathroom. And that was across the room from us, so I had Mm -hmm. literally no idea. I had been up there a couple times through the bathroom and never noticed it until that point, and neither of us... I got, she was dead asleep. She didn't even know what was going on. Yeah, she didn't wake up at all. <laughs> uh, but I kept, I kept waking up and feeling like somebody was in the corner staring at me. Um, and I, I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. But I did not, I did not sleep. It kind of reminded me of when we were at Malvern, mm-hmm. and I was having that like racing heart and feeling like somebody was looking at me. And I didn't want to get up and see if anybody was out there. But yeah. I don't know, man. It was, it was weird. It I didn't. Was all weird. I did not have anything happen the second night. I didn't either, but our friend in that room did. So at first that night, the second night, she's like, "I don't want to sleep in here. I don't want to sleep in here." And I was like, "Come sleep in my bed. Yeah. I'll sleep in your bed. We can share my bed." I was like, "I'm not bothered. I'll sleep yeah. in your bed." Um, and she was like, "No, no, it's okay." So she went to bed, and again, we kept our adjoining room open, and I was like. You just yell for me if you need me, blah, blah, blah. She's like, okay, I'll be okay. Yeah. And she was not. She said in the middle of the night, um, she was awake trying to fall back asleep and something grabbed her leg under the sheets. This was at like 5 a.m. almost. And she got up out of bed. She ran out the door. She said I was not quiet at all. I don't know how I didn't hear her. And she ran outside on our deck and stayed out there for two hours. She was so terrified. (laughs) Didn't want to come back (laughs) in the room. (laughs) Yes, and we, last time we were there, they have an unfinished basement area Mm -hmm. that we have gone down to and investigated on our own, and we did a little bit this time, not much, um, but it's pretty moist down there. It's very moist down there. It's very dank. Damp. Dank. Damp. Dank? What is dank? Like it's dank? (laughs) No, dank's a word, right? I think it is. (laughs) Permission to Google? (laughs) Oh my god, my... My, I think uh, she, are you Googling? She's Googling. <laughs> oh, dank, danker, dankest, unpleasantly moist or humid. Okay, there you go. Good job. Often chilly, a dank cellar. A dank cellar. <laughs> it's slang. It's slang. <laughs> You're so hip. <laughs> but this basement is huge. Like, it, it covers all underneath the antique shops and other shops that are along the main stretch. Yeah. And so we went down there the first time we were here. Did some spirit box yeah. sessions. There's definitely some cre- creepy, crispy, cri- yeah, crispy, <laughs> <some too>. crispy. <laughs> crispy and creepy wasps nests <laughs> yes. on the way down yes, there. there are. They're horrific looking. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I thought they were fake, but it uh, mm. turns out they're not. <laughs> fake wasp nests? <laughs> I don't know what they would be there for. I was just hoping they were fake. They're Paper mache. <laughs> huge. <laughs> <laughs> they're scary looking. <laughs> <clears throat> so who knows who knows what happened in this loft in this town yeah apparently look at us we didn't even mean to go ghost hunting and we wound up with a haunted place mm-hmm. yeah. look at Lindsay saying that huh Lindsay said that oh my gosh oh my gosh she's admitted <laughs> it's a haunted place we had some creepy experiences there i don't know we sure did we did we concur 
Mm-hmm. Speaking of cre- creepy. <gasps> Good segue. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Our topic tonight is a little different and it's one of my favorite things. A really nice rabbit hole that you can jump into and terrify yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's creepy pastas. Creepy pasta. I almost just saying the exact same thing. <laughs> I don't know why. We spend a little too much time together on the microphone. <laughs> <We do. laughs> um, so we each picked a different creepy pasta story that we mm-hmm. are going to share with each other. True that. According to Wikipedia, creepy pastas are horror related legends that have been copied and pasted around the internet. Uh, these internet entries are often brief, user-generated paranormal story- stories intended to scare readers. They include gruesome tales of murder, suicide, and otherworldly occurrences. And according to Time Magazine, the genre has a peaked, peaked audience in 2010 when it was covered by the New York Times. But I will say, I think it's still pretty popular, especially mm-hmm. on forums like Reddit. So yeah, we decided to go down this rabbit hole, Yeah, pick, pick one each. We did. The key here is that they're... they're fictional Mm -hmm. so we're not claiming claiming that these stories are real (laughs) but they're really fun to listen to are we ready to spin that wheel i'm ready okay there i found it (gasps) god whoever's yellow oh it's me it's sarah (laughs) i'm like i see color (laughs) Okay, let me take a little sipsies because this is a little bit of a long story, friends. Sipsy for the tipsies. Mm. Clever. Mm. All right. Thank you, thank you. I need some audience input at certain parts of the story. <gasps> Challenge, <Ooh>. Challenge ah. accepted. <laughs> so how I'm going to try to remember to signal or just, you know, when you feel like you need to insert yourself in the story. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? I need direction. You can um, make noises. <laughs> do I ever have a problem inserting myself into your stories? Bah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that might come up. I don't know. If you feel it's appropriate. <laughs> I'm just going to make random know. noises. <laughs> I think that sounds good. That? It's a fart. <laughs> It was a it fart. sounded like a meow or something. <laughs> oh, here we go. Where's, oh, oh. Caca. Here is my... She's got her, her hands. Here's my... Um, her her mini plastic hands. Signal. Okay. okay. Make so, a noise when... Make hand, any random noise we when want. When my tiny hand rises. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something. You look like you're about to be like, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. <laughs> I've got a recorder. It's, Should it's a I very... play that? Play it like Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star? No, no, okay. no. No, no recorder. I don't said, make a noise, like Lindsay. <laughs> I did say that. Make a noise with your mouth. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. I can't wait to make a noise. I don't even know what we're doing here. I think you're going to like it. But I'm going to tell you what it is first, and then I can give you a little bit more. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you guys about the Russian sleep experiment. <laughs> okay. Stop it. I will not stop. <laughs> she is going to go. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories. Yeah. I was going to write like a little synopsis of it, but then I decided, well, maybe I'll just try to, you know, read the story. And then I realized the story is really long. So hang in there, folks. It's going to be a good one. But okay. in the story, they have some of the characters saying things. Okay. okay. And it would make more sense if you guys said them with... <laughs> You're gonna tell As us what the character. Saying? Oh, yeah. You'll, okay. I'll say it first, and then you have to Repeat. say it back. Okay. In, like, zombie form. In my okay? demon voice? No. Zombie. What, what's a zombie voice? Figure it out. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> I don't have time to figure it out. Okay. <clears throat> Gotta get my my reading voice ready. I'm ready. <clears throat> the zombies are right. walking dead. Don't talk. I don't I know. I <laughs> am ready for this. No, but in other movies, they say things. Uh, yes, there it is. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> You've been waiting <laughs> on the fly. Look at me. For this day. I can't. I can't wait. I've been waiting for the day to use a zombie voice. It's like kind of similar to Chewbacca, but a little okay, bit more refined. I got this. Okay, <laughs> a little bit more refined Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, this is the Russian sleep experiment. Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based stimulant. 
They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so that the gas didn't kill them, since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed-circuit cameras, so they only had microphones and 5-inch thick glass porthole-sized windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on but no bedding, running water and toilet, and enough dried food to last all five for over a month. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained, having been promised falsely, that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Their conversation and activities were monitored, and it was noted that they continued to talk about increasingly traumatic incidents in their past, and the general tone of their conversations took on a darker aspect after the four-day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were, and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphones in one-way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the other subjects in in captivity with them. At first, the researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. After nine days, the first of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber, repeatedly yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. He continued attempting to scream, but he was only able to produce occasional squeaks. (laughs) Thank you. I just said the word squeak. He sounded like a mouse. (laughs) Thank you. That really added to the story. (laughs) You're welcome. Okay, where was it? All right. Squeaks. The researchers postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. Mm. The most surprising thing about his behavior is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather didn't react to it. They continued whispering to the microphones until the second of the captives started to scream. The two non-screaming captives took the books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, and pasted them calmly over the glass portholes. Gross. The screaming promptly stopped. So did the whispering to the microphones. After three more days passed, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working, since they thought it was impossible that no sound could be coming with five people inside. The oxygen consumption in the chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was the amount of oxygen five people would consume at a very heavy level of strenuous exercise. On the morning of the 14th day, the researchers did something they said uh, they would not do to get a reaction from the captives. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke any response from the captives they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. Vegetables. I like the descriptive word. Okay, yeah. They announced... We're opening the chambers to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor. You will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. No. Did I sound like a researcher? You sounded like one. Thank Mm -hmm. you. That was very official. To their surprise, they heard a single phrase in a calm voice response. We no longer want to be freed. We no longer (laughs) want to be freed. (laughs) (laughs) It's more like old man than <laughs> anything. But it's fine. You want me to say it in my demon voice just for a fact? You know what you sounded like? You sounded like the little kid from The Shining. Oh, that's Rag so rum. Okay. The ra- terrifying. Rag rum, yeah. That's what you sound like. We know that we're about to It was not calm at all. <laughs> just don't ever do that again. There'll be more opportunities for that voice coming out. Ooh. All right. Debate broke out among the researchers and the military forces funding the research. Unable to provoke any more response using the intercom, it was finally decided to open the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. The chamber was flushed of stimulant gas and filled with fresh air, and immediately voices from the microphones began to object. Three different voices began begging, as if pleading for the life of loved ones, to turn the gas back on. The chamber was opened and soldiers sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever, and so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. Four of the five test subjects were still alive, although no one could rightly call the state that they were in life. The food rations past day five had not been so much as touched, and there were chunks of meat from the dead test subjects' thighs and chest stuffed into the drain in the center of the chamber, blocking the drain and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. 
Precisely how much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. All four surviving test subjects also had large portions of muscle and skin torn away from their bodies. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone on their fingertips indicated that the wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth, as the researchers initially thought. Closer examination of the position and angles of the wounds indicated that most of it, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. The abdominal organs below the ribcage of all four test subjects had been removed, while the heart, lungs, and diaphragm remained in place. The skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the ribcage. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact. They had just been taken out and laid on the floor, fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects. The digestive tract of all four could be seen working, digesting food. It was quickly became apparent that what they were digesting was their own flesh that they had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. Oh. <laughs> Most of this... <laughs> thank you for adding that. That was I mean, it's good. I know. Sorry. It, is, it is gross. Most of the soldiers were Russian um, special operatives at the facility, but still many refused to return to the chamber to remove the test subjects. They continued to scream to be left in the chamber and alternative and alternately begged and demanded that the gas be turned back on, lest they fall asleep. To everyone's surprise, the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off and an <sighs> artery in his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. Another five of the lost... Er, another five of the lost... Another five of the soldiers <laughs> lost their lives, if you count ones that committed suicide in the week following the incident. In the struggle, one of the four living subjects had his spleen ruptured, and he bled out almost immediately. The medical researchers attempted to sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than ten times the human dose of a morphine derivative and still fought like a cornered animal, breaking the ribs and arm of one doctor. His heart was seen to beat for a full two minutes after he bled out to the point where there was more air in his vascular system than blood. Even after it stopped, he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes, struggling to attack anyone in reach and just repeating the word, More. More. <laughs> wow. Those were very different approaches. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We were different test subjects. <laughs> we were. <laughs> Uh, they repeated that over and over, weaker and weaker, until he finally fell silent. The surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility, the two with intact vocal cords continuously begging for the gas, demanding to be kept awake. The most injured of the three was taken to the only surgical operating room that the facility had. In the process of preparing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the sedative they had given him to prepare him for surgery. He fought furiously against his restraints when the anesthetic gas was brought out to put him under. He managed to tear most of the way through a four-inch wide leather strap on one wrist, even through the weight of a 200-pound soldier holding that wrist as well. Hmm. It took only a little more anesthetic than normal to put him under, and the instant his eyelids fluttered and closed, his heart stopped. In the autopsy of the test subject that died on the operating table, it was found that his blood had triple the normal level of oxygen. His muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn, and he had broken nine bones in his struggle to not be subdued. Most of them were from the force of his own muscles that he exerted on them. The second survivor had been the first of the group of five to start screaming. His vocal cords destroyed, he was unable to beg or object to his surgery, and he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head yes when someone suggested, reluctantly, that they try the surgery without anesthetic and did not react for the entire six-hour procedure of replacing his abdominal organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin. The surgeon presiding stated repeatedly that it should be medically impossible for the patient to still be alive. One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. <laughs> wanted you to curl into a smile oh i was like how do i do that with sound <laughs> i just wanted to see somebody <laughs> <laughs> i gave her the creepiest smile i could i wanted to see a creepy smile thank you sorry that's okay i thought we were making noises on command. i know i switched it up on you <laughs> uh when the surgery ended the subject looked at the surgeon and began to wheeze loudly attempting to talk while struggling 
Assuming this must be something of drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen and pad fetched so the patient could write his messages. It was simple. Keep cutting. Mm. The other two test subjects were given the same surgery, both without anesthetic as well, although they had to be injected with a paralytic during the duration of the operation. The surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patients laughed continuously. Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researchers with their eyes. The paralytic cleared their system in an abnormally short period of time, and they were soon trying to escape their bonds. The moment they could speak and they were again asking for the stimulant gas, the researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped out their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given, I must remain awake. All three subjects' restraints were reinforced and they were placed back into the chamber awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers facing the wrath of their military benefactors for having failed the stated goals of their project considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The commanding officer and ex-KGB instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. The researchers strongly objected but were overruled. In preparation for being sealed in the chamber again, the subjects were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for a long-term confinement. To everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling the moment it was let slip that they would be going back on the gas. It was obvious at this point that all three were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously. The mute subject was straining his legs against the leather bonds with all of his might. First left, then right, then left again for some t- something to focus on. The remaining subject was holding his head off of his pillow and blinking rapidly. Having been the first to be wired for EEG, most of the researchers were monitoring his brain waves in surprise. They were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatlined inexplicably. It looked as if he were repeatedly suffering brain death mm. before returning to normal. As they focused on paper scrolling out of the brainwave monitor, only one nurse saw his eyes slip shut at the same moment his head hit the pillow. His brainwaves immediately changed to that of deep sleep, then flatlined for the last time as his heart simultaneously stopped. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to be sealed in now. His brainwaves showed the same flatlines as the one who just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both subjects inside, as well as three researchers. One of them... Wait, they put three researchers in there with them? (laughs) Yeah, they were in there trying to restrain them, and one of them freaked out, and so they said, Shut the door! (laughs) Oh my gosh. One of the named three immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point-blank between the eyes, then turned the gun on the mute subject and blew his brains out as well. Mm. Rough. He pointed his gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to a bed as the remaining members of the medical and research team flood the room. I won't be locked up in here with these things, not with you, he screamed at the man strapped to the the table. What are you, he demanded. I must know. The subject smiled. Have you forgotten so easily, the subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging you to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The researcher paused, then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the subject weakly choked out, so nearly free. You did good. Thank you. Jeez. (laughs) That was intense. I was just like (laughs) on the edge of my seat there. (laughs) That's the Russian sleep experiment. That's a long story. (laughs) Sleep is good for you. Turns out sleep is good. (laughs) Yeah. very good. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was kind of crazy. That is crazy. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, let's spin that wheel. Real let's quick. Oh god, did I break did I break this chair? I'm so sorry. If I just was moving. I don't know. I'm really <laughs> sure, sorry. It's fine. Stop apologizing. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> but I was gonna ask, do you guys think do you think they're zombies? Do you think they turn them into zombies? Oh, because of the flat lining with the brains? I didn't even think about that. And they were eating each other's flesh? Yeah, I was just thinking psychotic. (laughs) Okay, while you spin, I want to show you I want to show you the only picture that I saw that They turned them into zombies. I know it's a creepy picture. It is a creepy picture. That's why I wanted to see it. Yeah. We're gonna show you. She's gonna spin and I will look. (laughs) Don't like that. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's spinning, but it doesn't have any sound no. on it. Oh, boy. Here we go. And yay! It's me! <laughs> All right. Okay. Does somebody want to pull up my PowerPoint? Oh, yeah. I can. You. My story is not as interactive as yours was. <laughs> no, that's okay. It was only like three places. <laughs> well, that's very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a PowerPoint. That's great. Let me pull it up. Creepy pasta. <gasps> that's what she labeled it as. <laughs> With I'm fun. Eight A's. Eight A's. I just held down the eight key for a long time. <laughs> we are doing Laughing Jack. <laughs> that sounds so scary. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Spadoon. Ew. <laughs> that is Laughing Jack. Ew. Looks like he has a um, Where's Waldo hat for a nose. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh my god, it does. Yeah, yeah. kind of does. It's like a striped pointy nose. I know this. I know what it reminds me of. Well, he's got pointy ass teeth, so there's that. That's scary. He does have pointy teeth. <laughs> but then this is like rem- giving me Labyrinth vibes when David Bowie was. It made me think of Game of Thrones because of the fur coat. You remind me of the babe. <laughs> the babe with the power. We went from Where's Waldo <laughs> to Game of Thrones to Labyrinth. This is what happens when I do creatures. <laughs> this came from somebody's brain, okay? <laughs> That's what they were thinking. All right. Laughing Jack, he is a supernatural evil clown. <laughs> if you didn't catch that. Wow. Let me wrap my hat around that. My supernatural hat. <laughs> evil clown. All right. So he was created by a guardian angel. And I told you guys this, but just so everyone knows, there's several stories about Laughing Jack. So I'm not going to read the story like you did. I'm just yeah. going to okay. talk about him. He was created by a guardian angel. As a jack-in-the-box type clown. I doubt it. What and does that mean? Like an ar- archangel? No, like okay. a, a guardian angel. Sure. So his personality would reflect the personality <laughs> of his owners. <laughs> she just looks like I'm sorry. <laughs> Got it, okay. Uh, I probably went in the red there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you did, it was like a thick one, too. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a real angry red zone. <laughs> okay. It was thick. All right. <laughs> He was given as a Christmas present to a little boy named Isaac Grossman in the 1800s. So Isaac has a pretty sad story. He grew up in an abusive home. He was neglected by his parents. Wasn't really loved. Didn't have any friends. Lucy. (laughs) Okay. She's good now. He was, like I said, so (laughs) kind of like, do you remember the show Fairly Odd Parents? Absolutely. (laughs) I mean, I, parents, fairly odd parents. Wants and wigs, bloody crowny things. <laughs> Never watched that one. <laughs> so this is kind of what it reminds me of. Like, he was a lonely, sad boy who had no friends. So oh, Timmy. they gave him a friend. And so the guardian angel gave him a friend. Listen, Cosmo and Wanda were never looking like that. I'm still caught up on this guardian angel business. <laughs> Next slide. Okay. Because that's what he originally looked like. <laughs> he was colorful and... Oh, this. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's what he originally looked like. He was oh, tall and happening. thin. He was multicolored. He had bright red hair, rainbow outfit, and feathery shoulders. <gasps> the labyrinth. That sat atop his raggedy outfit. So he was in a jack-in-the-box kind of thing, and you know you... Do, do, turn the do, side. Do, uh-huh. do, do, Pop do, do, goes do, the weasel. Do, do, yep. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I was. I, oh, I, I was blew too soon. Somebody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pop goes the weasel and then okay. he springs out. Okay. Got it. All right. So, just in case people didn't know what a jack in the box was, we just demonstrated it. <laughs> I like how this is a podcast and you moved your arms like you were spinning. <laughs> I was doing that for you guys. All yeah, because right. we don't know what it is either. So, thank you. Um, so, Isaac, like I said, had a very sad life. Jack accidentally. So, Jack was. Invisible to adults, but Isaac could see him. So they were playing together outside one day, and Jack accidentally killed the neighbor's cat. Hmm. Isaac, of course, told his parents, it wasn't me, it was Jack, who his parents Mm. thought was his invisible friend. So, of course, his parents didn't believe him and sent him to boarding school. Um, And Jack did not go with him. So, because Jack had nobody to play with, he became emotionless and lonely for 13 years Hmm. before Isaac returned. So Isaac's parents died at, or had passed away at this point, so Isaac inherits the house. <clears throat> Hang on, like he never came home for Christmas or anything? It says for 13 years nobody opened his box. So he sat in a box hmm. for 13 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's very sad. 
So, Isaac, plot twist, became a serial killer. Oh. Sad little boy. You know what? That makes sense, though. He harmed animals it when was he was him. a child. It was him, after all. Mm-hmm. He um, kidnapped, tortured, and murdered people. His first victim was a woman who refused to sleep with him. Oh, and it happened okay. in his old room where Jack was in the box watching. And Jack watched him kill someone. Because Isaac was having fun and Jack takes on the personality of his owner, he was at first horrified, but then was like, this is kind of fun. Mm-hmm. And was having fun, too. So Jack watched as Isaac disposed of the body by turning it into an armchair. The body? Yeah, we got ourselves an Ed Gein over here. Ed Gein. Ed Gein. <laughs> Ed Gein. Ed Gein <laughs> Ed Gein. Little leather face. I just picture like a like a body just sitting here, like now you know what this reminds me. They went into detail in the story about how he did it, and it was very graphic, so I did not oh, include that. Hang on, I'm gonna need you to just picture hold. an accident. This reminds me of something. There you go. And I'm I I must find it. I must. You must Google. I insist. No, I'm sure, like you know, picture a mannequin or a dead body just sitting there, and then you you sit on top. It was of made it. of like her skeletons and her bones, and then he um had made her skin like leather to like cover it mm. it was real gross it's very it doesn't graphic. sound very comfortable no no it does not <laughs> <laughs> you know what'd be great a skeleton chair covered in flesh <laughs> real cozy well here i'll open my other drink while I'm oh i found it yeah <laughs> i'm good oh, i'm nervous <laughs> So I found this <laughs> on Facebook Marketplace, oh, no. and it's you a, never know what you're gonna find there. It's a toilet seat. Oh, the, <laughs> oh god! It's like a person's just hugging you as you sit down. On the I don't like that. I don't at think all. that's what that's supposed to be. His I don't arms, like that. His arms are way out to the side. Oh god! Why is his mouth open? Oh no! Imagine if you're a guy and you're facing that while you're peeing. <laughs> I don't like that. I'm uncomfortable. So, yeah. Should we buy it and add it to Klaus Townhouse? Well, um, it, this was from September 19th, 2020. It's a garage sale. It went for a dollar. No, missed opportunity. $1. You never know what you're going to find in Prairie Village, Kansas. What? what? Sounds legit. Okay. So, armchair. That's where we left off. <laughs> yes. You can see why it reminded me of that. Uh-huh. Absolutely. <laughs> So one night um, after this and Jack had been watching Isaac kill many people, Jack's box was accidentally knocked off the shelf. So Isaac went upstairs to see what it was and opened it, but saw nothing inside. Mm. He just escaped. But then Jack appeared. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. His red hair was now mangled black hair that hung in twisted locks with sharp, jagged teeth and a twisted grin. He changed into a taller and darker version of himself, gray and black all over, and was described as demonic looking that looks like a real person i know i found like people dressing up as him for halloween (laughs) it was terrifying so that's one of them dressing up as him well now i know what to do for halloween (laughs) yes Yes. you can paint that face (laughs) i actually probably could i know you could get your nose get your nose in order and i could do the rest well i'll buy a little tiny where's waldo we'll put it on our noses (laughs) has to be black and white. Yeah, we can sharpie it. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> we can sharpie it. So then he tortured and killed Isaac um, with the same weapons that Isaac used on his victims. And full disclosure, I read this story and I had to skip the torture scene because it was a oh, lot. It was bad. Eh? It was oh. real bad. Real that, descriptive. That came from somebody's brain. That's yeah. what I kept thinking when so I was reading like, these things. I'm like, man. I know. That's <laughs> my, crazy my disclaimer for anyone who wants to go and read this actual story. It's very, very graphic. Okay. If the armchair didn't tip you off, I could read the armchair. I couldn't read the other part. Interesting. Uh, Laughing Jack began to visit other children, most of whom were lonely and neglected and would pretend to be their imaginary friend. He would then torture them and kill them, trapping their souls in a nightmarish realm of an abandoned fairground with the song Pop Goes the Weasel playing forever. No, how did we know that? This reminds me of like a really nightmarish Peter Pan. Yeah. Like visits like lonely children. Uh Uh-huh. Takes them to a faraway place. That's terrible. Have you ever seen Drop Dead Fred? Nope. No. Nope. You must. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I must. Okay. It reminds me of that. <laughs> I, I just think that sounds terrible. Also slightly annoying. 
Do you hear Pop Goes the Weasel yeah. nonstop for the rest of your life? Yeah, it <laughs> is. a catchy tune. Maybe once. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yay, yay. Um, so he does have some powers. He can teleport so he can, like, disappear like Ooh, that. He's Makes, super scary. Yeah. Makes himself invisible. Like I said, the parents don't see him. He can create nightmares and hallucinations and uses telekinesis to move objects with his mind. Oh, my God. Does he kill people with his sharp teeth? Um, it says he tortures them. I'm not sure how he kills them. Okay. I didn't really want to read too much about that. Uh, That's all part of your story. I know, I know, I know. He did, he, <laughs> this kidding. is what he does after he kills them. Okay. He stuffs the children with candy after killing them like pinatas. Okay. <laughs> He's like, Why? Okay. Well, like, candy's nice. Not in a dead person's <laughs> body cavity. It's better than, like, stuffing somebody with something gross. Okay. All right. If you had to, be- <laughs> you want to eat candy out of a dead person? I didn't know people were going to eat the candy. <laughs> what but they just, they do just the for candy? to keep it full. The, the idea to of keep candy. it full, give it the shape. <laughs> I don't know. What's in his lap? It's a head. It's oh. a head of a child. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's my guess. Yes. And yes. candy. <laughs> Yes, there's candy around. Candy. <laughs> See, his you were excited about the candy, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> My theory stands. And his arms grew <laughs> in length. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, he's described as very tall and thin, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, in another story, he visits a lonely boy who's five years old named James. James told his mother, you know, she didn't believe him. Imaginary friends. Um... One day, his mother had a nightmare witnessing the souls of Laughing Jack's past victims in an abandoned fairground. <sighs> so the next day, you know, James, or not James, sorry, Jack starts to move James's things around to mess with the mom. Laughing Jack killed their dog. <clears throat> sorry. Aww. I'm not going to say how, because for points that I won't. It you happened. know, we breezed over the cat. <laughs> But and I'm breezing over the dog. I'm not telling you how. Okay. Breezing it, for the torture like, scenes. There's three sentences here. I'm going to skip those for you. Okay. So basically the mom finds it. She um, calls the police. The police were like, oh, it's just a robbery. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> the police sounded in my head there. Um, so they return home and she goes to check on her son via the baby monitor, which I'm like, why does a five-year-old have a baby monitor? But whatever. We're cool. Okay. The mother hears a soft moan and enters... Her son's Mm. room, where she sees her son nailed on the wall, disemboweled, with his eyes gouged out and tongue and teeth removed, and sees Laughing Jack sadistically cackling at the sight of his work. The mother grabbed a knife and tried to kill Laughing Jack, but he simply vanished into a black cloud. This distracted the mother, causing her to accidentally plunge her knife into her son's beating (gasps) heart, killing him instantly. Wait, so you're telling me he was pinned on the wall... Disembodied and eyes out, but alive. And alive. Barely. Again, this came from someone's brain. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. So the police arrested her and sent her to a uh, hospital for the criminally insane. Oh, they thought she did it. Aw. She claims that being institutionalized is not that bad, despite noting that somebody keeps playing <clears throat> Pop Goes the Weasel outside her room. Oh, damn it, Jack. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> no. So Laughing Jack, he was created by Steve Akins, and he has uh, two stories that he wrote called Laughing Jack and the Origin of Laughing Jack, and then other people have written several stories afterwards, because he's a very popular creature. Yeah. Yeah, Steve. So there is kind of a reason I picked this story. I know what it is. (laughs) Do you remember what the other creepypasta story I've done is? Slenderman. Yes. And Slenderman had a true crime associated with it. Yes, they did. So does Laughing Jack, unfortunately. Oh. Oh, I was about to say, I was about to make a noise. All right. So, this is Maria Torres. In 2015, in Indiana, a 12-year-old girl, uh, whose name has not been released because she is a minor still, but they refer to her in court documents as JT, so we can call her JT, set fire to her room before stabbing her stepmother, Maria Torres, Mm -hmm. aged 50, to death. Oh, man. Her father tried to restrain her and pull her off her stepmother, and he was stabbed too, but he did survive. She told her father that Laughing Jack told her to do it. Oh, man. At 12. So this is some of the quotes from the court reports. Edwin is her father. Edwin found JT near the apartment's front door. She was holding a knife and standing in an unusual posture. He looked into her eyes and just did not recognize her. Quote, 
Edwin told JT they needed to leave or they would all die in the fire because their room was on fire. She told him to stay back and not come closer, speaking in a clownish tone of voice. What? Oh, God. <laughs> That's horrific. So, at 12, she had significant mental health history. She has since been diagnosed with uh, dissociative identity disorder yeah. or multiple personalities and schizophrenia. Oh, it's hard. She was found incompetent to stand trial. Um, reportedly, she said she heard voices and had an alter ego and begged her father to help her before oh, this happened. That. So symptoms um, that they, she's had several mental health professionals obviously see her since then. They report hearing the voices of personalities named Star and Anna, and she adopted these personas at times. She also developed an obsession with Laughing Jack, mm. uh, a character popularized in online fiction stories known as Creepypasta, and started associating with him and how she dressed and acted. Oh, man. So she was placed in a juvenile detention center. And like I said, they said she was incompetent to stand trial. So they were like, let's get her mental health treated. They put her on meds. She was refused by 16 psychiatric facilities before they finally got her moved to a residential mental health facility in Ohio in 2017. So it took them two years to get her to a place. Mm. Her public defender, Holly Curtis, was quoted as saying, quote, This little girl has been failed by everyone. The risk level for her is beyond anything I think anyone can imagine for her. Not to be able to get the help she's crying out for is probably one of the biggest travesties I've seen so far with the system and with a state agency not willing to step up and do their job, which I think is probably accurate. Yeah, I mean, it just proves the point that mental health is a struggle to yeah. find help for. Mm-hmm. So the last update I found was from 2019, so I don't really know what's happened in the two years since then. Um, but in April 2018, she had a hearing, so she was 15 at this time, and they were basically trying to see if she was competent at this point. And they looked at her phone history, and she had searched things like how to hide from cops, how to make poison, how to sharpen a knife, how Mm -hmm. to act if you were stopped by the police, and would watch videos of stabbings and listen to Pop Goes the Weasel on repeat. Mm. Hell no. Oh my gosh. Um, So the family actually defended her at this hearing and said she needs a mental health facility. She does not need prison. They said that she did not remember anything from that night, and that was one of the personalities who killed the stepmother. And they decided, though, which is a good thing, that they decided to try her as a juvenile, not as an adult. So yeah. if she's tried as a juvenile, she'll be released at the age of 21. So oh, is she in the mental health facility now? Still? She's still in the mental health yeah, facility. I she still has that. not been competent to stand trial. And so really, they're just trying to treat her. Wow. Well, that's horrible all around. This. Yes. So nice. just sad that some people just read into these stories and identify with them. Yeah. And... They're so impressionable at that age. Oh, so impressionable. 12 years old. Yeah. I but know. that's how I originally heard about Laughing Jack, so. Mm-hmm. Well, Laughing Jack sucks. Yeah, he's terrifying. And Boyson's going to be him for Halloween, apparently. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah. TBD. TBD. He's terrifying. He is awful. All right, boys, so what you got? Let's hear it. This one's called (laughs) Gateway of the Mind. Okay. Ooh. So in 1983, a team of deeply pious scientists conducted a radical experiment in an undisclosed facility. I don't know what that means, so. Same. Undisclosed facility. (laughs) that part (laughs) thank you for clarifying you're welcome i appreciate that the scientists had theorized that a human without access to any senses or ways to perceive stimuli would be able to perceive the presence of god okay i'm like where do people even think this you know how you can see god take away all your senses Mm -hmm. actually i I have heard that that it's okay They believe that the five senses clouded our awareness of eternity, and without them, a human could actually establish contact with God by thought. An elderly man who claimed to have, quote, nothing left to live for, was the only test subject to volunteer. Aww. It is sad. It is sad. I like old people. I know you do. Mm Mm-hmm. To purge him of all of his senses, the scientists performed a complex operation in which every sensory nerve connection to the brain was surgically severed. Uh, 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 okay. I mean, that's better than it's gouging out his eyes. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I was going to get mad if you were going to talk about eye guide. How is that possible? But I, I don't. It's okay. Proceed. 
in creepy pasta land, anything is possible. I know. I you understand. Read a story about zombies, so I know. And I thought the whole time, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although the, the test subject retained full muscular function, he could not see, hear, taste, smell, or feel. Hmm. With no possible way to communicate with or even sense the outside world, he was alone in his thoughts. Yeah, hmm. it just darkness and white noise. Hello, darkness, my old friend. No. Maybe that's where that, <laughs> that song originated from. Oh, yes, you think so? Wrote, I think he wrote that. that. Song. Mm-hmm. Well, his... I guess he could, because he still has muscular function. Yeah, he, he can write. But he couldn't feel the pen or the paper. <sighs> it didn't matter. He's, he's writing still about the it. sound of silence. And let's yes. just do it in the air. People can figure out what he's saying. I agree. That would be weird not feel anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> it would. <laughs> okay, Sorry. <laughs> Agreed. Scientists monitored him as he spoke aloud about his state of mind in jumbled, slurred sentences that he couldn't even hear. After four days, the man claimed to be hearing hushed, unintelligible voices in his head. Assuming it was an onset of psychosis, the scientists paid little attention to the man's concerns. Two days later, the man cried that he could hear his dead wife speaking with him, and even more, he could communicate back. The scientists were intrigued, but were not convinced until the subject started naming dead relatives of them, of theirs. Mm -hmm. Creepy. Creepy. Pasta. (laughs) Pasta, 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 pasta. (laughs) It is indeed. Accurate. He repeated personal information to the scientists that only their dead spouses and parents would have known. At this point, a sizable portion of the scientists left the study. After a week of conversing with the deceased through his thoughts, the subject became distressed, saying the voices were overwhelming. In every waking moment, his consciousness was bombarded by hundreds of voices that refused to leave him alone. He frequently threw himself against the wall, trying to elicit a pain response. He begged the scientists for sedatives so he could escape the voices by sleeping. And this tactic worked for three days until he started having severe night terrors. The subject repeatedly said that he could see and hear the deceased in his dreams. Wouldn't it all be dreams? Or is he really sleep? He sleeps, huh? Yeah, he sleeps. Okay, all right. Yeah, I guess it'd be hard to separate in his case. Only a day later, the subject began to scream and claw at his non-functional eyes. Hoping to sense something in the physical world. Oh gosh. <laughs> Hold on, Sarah's not recovered from that. <sighs> Sorry. They're not there, but get them out. No, okay. they're there. They're just not they're functional. Just not <laughs> also, he can't feel them. Oh, God. Oh, so he could do some damage to himself because he doesn't feel pain. Yeah, it's like whenever you're you're at the dentist and you're numbed and yes. you can just slap yourself. I do that all the time. I do too. <laughs> Last time I was had to get some stuff done, it was like numb all the way up to my eye. Yes. And so I was like scratching my eye and I was just like <laughs> Yes. And they're like, stop doing that. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> Like it goes from underneath your eye all the way to your yes, ear. Yes. D- and I'm, yes. I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, please, you're gonna have to have mittens. <laughs> I'm gonna restrain you. Did I tell you guys this story? So true. <laughs> you know that horrific story about the girl that OD'd on drugs and clawed her own eyes out. Have you yes. heard that one? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> I hate this one. I told Christina. She reminded me of that girl because she gave herself a corneal abrasion. Oh my gosh! <laughs> digging out her fucking contacts Ew. that oh. were not there. Oh. <laughs> She's just trying to pull her eye out. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I was like, you're going to be this girl. No, gross, 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 gross. It turns out they they were either falling out or they had gone up in her eyelid. Oh, my God. I'm going to take my headphones off. By the time she figured it out, she had like nine contacts in each eye. No, shut the door. How did she have so many oh, contacts? I so I have pictures. Oh my gosh, no, no pictures. You have pictures of her contacts <laughs> in her <laughs> eyes? <laughs> that she <laughs> took out <laughs> in a pile. Oh, so <laughs> she just <laughs> continuous, she she was keeping contacts <laughs> in her eye socket. She thought they kept falling out every day. 
But they were going up into her eyes. So she just kept putting them in and putting them in. <laughs> this girl. <laughs> and then finally realized. <laughs> she said it was a ball of contact. It's just contacts. I'm not looking. It's no it's eyeballs. It's really not gross at all. It's just li- like little. I wouldn't show you anything gross. <sighs> This is Six, the worst story ever. Ten, ten contacts balled up. There you go. <laughs> only, only her. I know. That's why it reminded me of Christina. Are you ready? Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> Non-functioning eyeballs. Okay. Proceed. That was the worst detour we ever took. <laughs> I'm sorry. I enjoyed it. It made me laugh. All right. So. <clears throat> okay. Non-existent. Non-functioning. Non-functioning eyes. Non-functioning eyes. I'm back. Okay. Uh, the hysterical subject now said the voices of the dead were deafening and hostile, speaking of hell and the end of the world. At one point, he yelled, no heaven, no forgiveness, for five hours straight. Oh, wow. He continually begged to be killed, but the scientists were convinced that he was close to establishing contact with God. And after another day, the subject could no longer form coherent sentences. Seemingly mad, he started to bite off chunks of flesh from his arm. What is it with you guys in flesh? <laughs> zombies. <Or nurses. laughs> I like zombies. I like flesh. <laughs> I like flesh. Uh, the scientists rushed into the test chamber and restrained him to a table so he could not kill himself. After a few hours of being tied down, the subject halted his struggling and screaming. He stared blankly at the ceiling as teardrops silently streaked across his face. Aww. For two weeks, the subject had to be manually rehydrated due to the, due to the constant crying. Is that a thing? <laughs> I tried to say that with a straight face. <laughs> manually hydrated? So they're He's pouring so water down his face? from his tears. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. That doesn't sound like a thing. Is this like buckets of tears? <laughs> Shit. It was okay. constant. I guess so. Eventually, he turned out. <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, we didn't poke holes in all of your medical stuff. <laughs> you should have. I laughed at it the whole time when I was reading. Okay. Uh, eventually, he turned his head and, despite his blindness, made focused eye contact with the scientist for the first time in the study. He whispered, I have spoken with God, and he has abandoned us, and its vital signs stopped. There was no apparent cause of death, and I have to add that it was cardiac arrest dehydration from tears <laughs> <laughs> that i will poke a hole in but yeah this oh, poor old man who had nothing left to live for. Oh, why did you pick a sad one i mean they're all kind of sad they are all kind of sad <laughs> everybody dies in them they're all terrible <laughs> the look she yours wasn't me. rainbows either <laughs> i know <laughs> mine was sad too oh boy Oh, that's joy. So I would like to thank Anonymous from creepypasta.com. <laughs> Anonymous. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, to our group smorgasbord about creepypasta stories. There's so many. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. There's so many to choose from. Uh-huh. Um, Reddit has a really good one, too, of no sleep. Have you oh. ever read Reddit's no sleep? No. Forum? I have not. It's kind of like that, creepypasta, where it's like horror stories. Yeah. But I, But the thing with no sleep is that they say all of their stories are true so you never know if they are or not. my son wants me to pick characters like uh siren head and and jeff the killer once he's got a story about siren head oh my gosh <laughs> siren head and freaking momo i'm sorry about that i don't i don't know if momo's an actual creepy pasta i don't think she is she's i think she's like a YouTube weird but sensation yeah siren yeah. head is and i thought about doing siren head it was a little close to comfort yeah Long story short, my kids at daycare, some kids were talking about Siren Head and Momo, mm-hmm. and so my kids came home talking about it, and so we were like, no, they're not real, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Well, my little girl was able to explain to us in detail what Momo looked like. Mm-hmm. I was like, how do you it. know mm-hmm. what Momo looks like? I was like, she's seen it. Yeah. So we talked with daycare teachers, and they were like, no, the kids were talking about it. We shut it down. I'm like, she knows what Momo looks like. Yeah. Like, how does she know that? And so I kept asking my kid over and over again, and she finally said that a teacher showed it to her on the blue iPad and told me the teacher's name, and daycare did investigating, and that teacher did show her what it was. Yeah. And my poor little sweet girl (laughs) cried herself to sleep and was so afraid for like three nights in a row, she would come into our room crying, saying, Momo's going to get me. Momo's coming after me. Yeah, Momo had her moment. (sighs) Momo's creepy. Do you see what I did there? I did. I did. Thank you. 
So Momo, <laughs> yeah, no. not a fan of you, Momo. <laughs> no, she's the worst. Um, totally agree. Mm-hmm. And Siren Head, I guess, is just like this really tall creature with literally just sirens for its head. <laughs> but it's pre- it's it plays scary music like from the purge. Uh huh. And um, Beckett kind of liked that one for a while. <laughs> I know. I didn't even know what that was. And he knew exactly who Jeff the Killer was when we went to the Halloween store. They have costumes for those. I don't know that either. He's very popular too. Well, if nothing else out of this week, guys, we got a Halloween costume for Boydston this year. Oh, there we go. Creepy pasta theme. Siren head. <laughs> Momo. I will dress up as a piece of pasta. <laughs> <laughs> With okay. like a scary face, so I'll be <laughs> skeleton pasta. face. On yes. it. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, I love it. I like it. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in this week. We will catch you guys next week. Oh wait, I didn't do any of my <laughs> crap on a stick. <laughs> that was offensive. <laughs> How does one crap on a stick? <laughs> I don't know. Explain later. Poop on a stick. Okay. <laughs> All right. You can always find us at thetipsyghost.com or send us an email to thetipsyghost at gmail.com. You can find all of our socials from our website. Please give us a five-star rating and a great review on Apple Podcasts. We would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in this week. We will catch you guys next week. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.